So here we are today at the BMX track with Joel. You remember Joel? Back at Digital TV. Let me remind you, Pro Tog Cheap Cam Challenge in Cologne. The place, not the smelly water. But this time, no cheap camera. <laughs> Very expensive camera. Proper camera today. Yep. And perhaps the challenge is getting even less because they've updated the firmware with some nice new features for stills and for, for video. Uh, for still, you've got pre-capture. Pre pre-capture is called, yeah. Well, let's try it out. Let's get in position. Let's uh, set up, shall we? But you won't be needing this camera. <laughs> no. <laughs> so we've got Protog Joel Markland on a tiny bike and also testing a new firmware and a new lens. We also have BMXs, normal size, beyond content blokes shooting some lush B-rolls and Louis, the man with the sick flying skills and people caressing some lush Nikon gear. But let's start this video off with some useful information first. Coldness makes you want to wee. Oh, do you yeah. just do you just like have a little tinkle on the slopes or just hold it in? One thing that sets pros apart from the non pros. And then right as we handed the car back, I needed we, and I had a we within the, their premises, just in their car park. It's the British in me coming out into the French car park. The truly impressive thing was that it was snowing that day and I managed to spell my name in it. Anyway, too much information. Let's move on. Anyway, yeah. it's quite slippery this gravel. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> well, yes, firmware update. Just to give it more oomph. The Z9 is going to be obviously aiming at pro photographers. And it just makes it better. Not just pro photographers, videographers as well. EK60. Raw. N Raw. Pro Res Raw. Uh, sashimi Raw. Yeah, Whoa, we, we I like get, almost like, died there. there. You're gonna get down there? Probably, or maybe we can, we can try to be very low here. Getting down oh. low. Sounds like a good plan. Can do your knees. So yes, new firmware, but just a quick refresher. The Z9 can do 20 FPS and it doesn't have a mechanical shutter, just a drum machine sound instead. And for the focus, it's still insanely good for sports. It's really hard to find that exact angle. This is one useful thing with, uh, you know, mirrorless cameras. You'll be using the LCD. Well, who says pros don't use LCD screens to shoot? So what kind of, uh, what autofocus mode would you use for this? So I'm using uh, the wide, uh, small, so the eye autofocus system. Right. And when I press on the AFM button, it actually switches to 3D tracking. So yeah. I'm actually mi mixing two different autofocus modes. Nice AF setup idea from Joel there. And the firmware update gives more options with regards to AF customization too, with 20 types of customizable area AF shapes that you can select two of your fave for C1 and C2 modes. It's our fuel. Keep us going on a chilly, chilly spring day in, in London. It's, it's snow, man. It's mental today. <laughs> Let's show the man behind the controls here. It's Louis. Look at that. He's got his own little screen. I say little, sumo. It's a big boy. Because the wind is coming here, they will not get as much air on this one. On that first straight, it's probably not too... They're throwing towards the wind, so they're yeah. actually going... Yeah. <laughs> Parkour! <laughs> Alright, wrong sport, wrong place. The update also allows you to use the Z9 more like you would a DSLR. Shoot with the finder and preview on the LCD. Oh. Small thing, but it makes sense. If you can keep hold of the camera, that is. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> well, even the Z9 is getting some air. Both from cameras today. <laughs> oh, I'm fine, I'm fine now. <laughs> it's not a flying camera yet. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> That one's that one's probably flying. The firmware update has unlocked some super sweet video capabilities too. We'll get to that bit later. But even though I'm using the LCD for shooting, the EVF is looking incredibly smooth. So with the firmware update, it's also got 120 frames per second viewfinder, which is quite amazing really. 
the EVF can be turned down to minus 5 EV brightness now. I'm sure there's a situation where that can be useful, but I can't think of that right now. When the heat is turned up with the action, the Z9 performs phenomenally. Subject tracking, panning with the subject, focusing on subject, moving towards the camera, the AF keeps up and with the burst, it feels like you've got plenty of solid shots to choose from. So I've got 120 FPS. If you're cool with dropping down to 11 megapixels, you can shoot it at 120 FPS, which is nuts. You can make a lovely slow-mo video from all the photos you got. Twenty FPS. Oh my God! I'm cycling through the images. It's just like <laughs> slow motion, I'm trying to chimp, chimp it. It's not that fun looking through a 120 FPS burst. Although you can skip to the first shot in the burst easily. With the addition of pre-capture, you get even more frames to choose from, or more shots to sift through. Pre-release burst. You can choose between none, 0.3 seconds, 0.5 seconds, one second. So the moment you press AF on, it's got, I don't know if you can see it, there's a very tiny green dot there. That's to show you when it's saving shots in the buffer. And then when you press the shutter button, that's when it saves one second before you start shooting. Of course, when you're half pressing, that only saves that once you take the shot. But if you don't take a shot, it'll just get rid of that from its memory. But also in the shooting display, if you go to that same menu, you've also got post-release burst. So from one second, two second, three second, max. Basically, that's after you've taken a shot, you'll still save some images for up to one, from one second, two second, three second, up to the maximum. So we got a bit of fishy action. Uh, fish eye, it's an AF, AFS lens. Eight to fifteen millimeter. I think we've we've tried this at Dishrev. But uh, nice circular action there. It's like a Beastie Boys music video. Pre-capture, good for whoosh, one of these. <laughs> Take a look here. I half press which starts pre-capture, you see the green dot. Then I fully press the shutter button. Without pre-capture, this would have been my first shot taken. But instead, it saves a load of shots before that before I've fully pressed the shutter button. Do pose as well. Oh, stand in the face. Lock, you're in the shot. You're still in. You're still in. <laughs> you're still in. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Z9, fisheye, 20 FPS, pre-capture, so, so cool. All right, maybe that was cooler. <laughs> oh, I don't... And it's just compared to the D6 when it comes to getting action shots. And the big difference is that, you know, with the D6 you might have tried this a few times you know and i mean it was a really great camera to come out of focus but now you just need one try and you know it's there yeah it's tack sharp and i think you know for these kinds of shots make a big difference i guess it'll come to come to a point when you probably forget about dslrs and you just this this will become the norm for for, for working photographers yeah and no, i mean transitioning from dslrs to mirrorless i was a bit worried you know about the viewfinder, how is it going to be? But it's it's very bright and also it's quite big. Yeah. I guess you have not seen any problems with uh, because it doesn't use a mechanical shutter on the Z9. You've not seen any problems with any rolling shutter or no, because the readout speed is really fast, so that has not been an issue at all. No. Yeah. And you used it at the Winter Olympics. I did, yeah, and the Paralympics. So I was in China for. 41 days. The one thing we had issues with was the cold. But you know, the I mean, it was so cold, it was 15 to 25 minus a day with wind. So we had a chill effect of minus 25, minus 35. But I mean, the canvas was not what was giving up. It was, you know, us photographers, the fingers, the yeah, yeah. feet. It was us struggling. <laughs> yeah. Camera fine, photographers numb. 
That's exactly how it was, yeah. So there are times when you're, you're shooting uh, out in the field or shooting sports where you do sometimes miss the action when it's just like, oh, damn, it's just... I don't, I don't want to say that it happens, but it does. <laughs> I guess it's just a reality, shots, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's like sometimes... Uh, obviously, there might be something which is even better just before. It could be a millisecond, could be... Yeah, and the thing is also in sports, sometimes you react to what's happening and you're just like, mm. Yeah. I wish I would, you know, been more focused. Now unlocked for video mode, you've got 4K 120, 8K and now 8K 60. You can also shoot RAW in turning Nikon RAW or ProRes RAW. ProRes RAW is great for compatibility. For Nikon RAW, at this point, you can use DaVinci Resolve to do color correction right away. Okay, now it's time to turn up the heat with this bad boy, the 800mm. And we've got to do it in style, right? Well, maybe I'll, I'll ditch that then. Okay. So, got this massive lens. The only problem is, that's quite close. So, it doesn't look that big. If you take the lens hood off, actually is incredibly tiny and lightweight for an 800 millimeter lens. Even I can lift that. <laughs> Before, it's an 800 is just oh, like... Man. It's crazy, <laughs> like, yeah, it's yeah. like, I can juggle with this. That doesn't got anything in it. <laughs> there's, a bit of, there's a bit of glass in there. It's not all that long, is it? But it's an 800 millimeter lens. It's crazy. Face resinal, which makes it much shorter. Clever design. Well, the lens might be incredibly short and light for an 800 millimeter, but the problem is that the focal length is still 800 millimeter. Right, I got a wheel there. Couldn't even see that. <laughs> God, like, I mean, let, let, let me use Joel for. That's very tight. So yes, face resonal. That means it's it's extremely light. I mean, can you imagine doing this with a regular 800 millimeter? Don't think so. There we go. I think it's still too tight. So it's an f6.3 max voucher. Oh, the weight. It's got all your your fancy but it's made in China it's not made in Japan but that's all right you, you try to do this with a, another 800 millimeter lens impossible let's cross always we'll be missing these shots okay here we go where are they, <laughs> there they are. okay I mean one thing is with this I oh know oh, it's gonna there's a car in the way <laughs> that's one problem Face detection. Here they come. No, it's a bus. Bah, blo bloody bus. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm taking the wrong picture. I'm taking a picture of that lady on the bike. <laughs> the, the wrong BMX lady. The focus, the focus on that. As it turned out, I could just about manage a shot within the park if I got the BMXs to go in the bush. Obviously, I'm having a bit of trouble getting lots of test yeah. shots, but there's no sacrifice in sharpness with this lens. There's plenty of it. It's a well-corrected lens. But of course, the thing you have to bear in mind is the max aperture of f6.3. But hey, you get five and a half stops of VR, and it works with the teleconverters on offer to make it even longer. The new firmware and short long lens are going to be great news for a lot of the typical target users of the Z9. And more! I mean, Nikon can pack the Z9 with that extra video goodness in their flagship shooter because they don't have to worry about doing the doo-doo on one of their own cine cameras because they don't have any. Getting an early hands-on with the Z9 was exciting, but it's even more exciting that a firmware update can eke out more performance and features to make it not only more reliable at getting winning shots, but a better camera for using too. The addition of the 800mm, did I mention the crazy small size and low weight, shows that there's the glass to go with the camera. And with the lightweight nature of it, it's surely going to open up some new photo opportunities that you probably wouldn't have gotten with the non-PF Beastly 800s. Just maybe not for shooting within a skate park, though. I think in France, when we were working for Digital Rev TV, we were, we were shooting for like 12, 13 hours, and everybody was holding it in. <laughs> it was super cold. I, I, we, we had to hand the car back because we, we were doing this ad, 
and then right as we handed the car back, I needed a wee, and I had a wee within the, their premises, just in their car park. <laughs> it's the British in me coming out into the French car park. Just, you know, it's like leaving a Union Jack in bright yellow in the French car park. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> the lens. <laughs> yeah.